Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I have uh, three Malbec, actually I don't have quite three Malbecs here. I've got two and a half Malbecs, or maybe 2.4 Malbecs, because there's two ma wines that say Malbec on the label, and there's a Malbec based blend. Uh, let's just dig in and see where we get to. First one is, we're in France, uh, and this is Cornon La Fleur Malbec Paydoc 2012, uh, blah blah blah, juicy wine, uh, barbecues, pizzas, etc, etc. Give it a whirl. Earthy, juicy, um, lots and lots of berries, going ver slightly onto that jammy side. Um, and uh, maybe, yeah, jammy vanilla, it feels like someone's tried to uh, make very um, fresh, fresh fruity, but slightly confected wine here. It smells okay, but um, uh, I just wish they hadn't quite manipulated the fruit in this way to give to add this vanilla polish. When you come to taste it, there's more of that earthy uh, terroir feel coming through. The violets, the classic blackberries and black currants of, of Malbec. And uh, yeah, I don't notice that vanilla character too much. So apologies for the, uh, if I dissed it from having smelt it, but um, uh, if, if I do have a problem with it, I'd almost like a little bit more grunt and uh, like a little bit more extraction. But um, for an eight quid wine, I can't fault it. And there's loads of people who'd, who'd love this um, juicy, simple, fresh style, which um, is definitely French rather than Argentinian. We're moving on to Argentina in a moment, but not before I've had another swig of this. OK, Argentina. Um, so this one, next one, is Felino 2012 Malbec. Uh, Felino is a, a label from Vina Cobos, which um, there's, a, there's a Californian winemaker, a guy called Paul Hobbs, um, and uh, so this is his winery. Um, so 2012, uh, Mendoza, doesn't quite does say whereabouts in Mendoza. Uh, it is selected vineyards in the Uco and Lucan de Cujo appellations. Give it a whirl. And a very different beast. Uh, stick my nose in there, and there it feels like it's a fuller, juicier, more, more, more of everything. More oak. Um, so I get this uh, smoky, slightly toasty character coming through. Uh, more sweet violet scent. Uh, more of those. Um, the fruit verging towards that cassis, really, really ripe black currants, and into and into the blackberries. And also a little bit of reduction here. Um, so it feels like a wine that at the moment is uh, slightly curled in on itself and needs a little bit of time to come out of its shell. So I'll give it a bit more swirling before I taste it. Big powerful style. Um, and as I, as I was saying from the nose, it feels still curled in on itself. Feels like it just needs a, another, at least another half hour open to, to, to fully show its, um, uh, its, its, its class. But um, I've had, I, when I've tasted some of the Vina Cobos wines in the past, I found some of them almost too big for their own good. Here, uh, it feels like, I don't know whether it's a change of style or a thing, something with the vintage, but it doesn't feel like they've got the fruit quite as ripe as they uh, uh, have, or overripe as they, as they have in the past. There is more of a spring in its step. Um, so I like it now, I think I'm going to like it more in a couple of hours. Final one, this was the 2.4, uh, Clodalos Siete. Uh, the, it's one of the, I don't know how many vintages they've done of it now. This must be getting close to, I think 2002 was the first. Uh, so not quite the 10th vintage, but close to it. Uh, Clodalos uh, Siete 2010. And I think there's Cabernet in here, and I think there's some Merlot in here, but uh, there's quite a lot of Malbec too. There are probably a few other things that make their way in there as well. Uh, but um, I'll flash something up. You'll be able to uh, find out precisely what it is. And it's that rich, oily, juicy, uh, polished style, uh, and it's a very, uh, it's a very seductive style. Um, it, everything is ripe, everything is rounded and smooth. There's a, a touch of smoky bacon character to the oak. There's a wildness, there's a spiciness. You get some of that violet scent of Malbec. Uh, you get some of the uh, uh, the black currantiness of, uh, uh, of of Cabernet Sauvignon coming through, and uh, it smells, it, it, it smells confident. And it's a very seductive style. I mean, there's, there's fruit there. Uh, it's verging on the overripe, but it's not gone into that desiccation. Um, there's a little bit of tannic bite there. There's an earthiness. That is, so it's, it, it, there's a sense of a place rather than just processes. Um, and one of those wines that... Um, it, 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 there, there's some wines like this which are really quite glossy, uh, straight out of the traps. And do you think, oh, there, there, that's it, that's it. But um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I watched this bottle. I, I, I think about it compared with some previous vintages. It feels like there's a little bit more earthiness and terroiricity. Is that a word? Uh, it is now. Uh, to, to the wine. Um, so... 
I I quite like that. I'm, I, I I I think I like it more than uh, uh, than the the, the pre previous vintages I've, I've tried. Uh, it also feels like a wine that uh, it's still got some unwinding to do. Uh, so yes, there's this glossiness and uh, flesh and uh, juicy appeal now. But I think that um, given some time, it'll uh, come even more out of its shell and maybe quieten down a little bit uh, on the surface, but uh, and start revealing some of uh, some uh, a few uh, layers which aren't as apparent now. Um, I like these three wines. I, 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 I'm very happy to drink any of the three of them. Probably the favourite, and I never thought I'd say this, is the is the Claude de la Siete, but um, um, but yeah, they've all got something to say for themselves. A bit like me, really. I'll shut up for the moment, and I will see you soon. <laughs>